how to pay off your mortgage faster using your own house. That's the topic for today's episode. And without further ado, let's dive in. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. For those who are tuning in for the first time, this is your channel for real estate education. So in today's episode, we're gonna talk about velocity banking, right? I'm sure you've heard about that concept in many places. I've also gotten a lot of subscribers, a lot of you guys asking me what exactly is it and how does it work? So that's why I decided to create this episode to break down all that it's involved in it and how you can actually make the most out of it. So for those who don't know, the concept of velocity banking applies to simply accelerating your mortgage payments so you can actually get out of the debt faster. Now, I've talked about velocity banking without actually using the term before. And if you are not new to my channel, I'm sure you have seen other videos where I talk about how to pay off your mortgage faster using credit cards. There is another video that I also created that talks about how to pay off your mortgage faster using your escrow. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about how to accelerate right that mortgage payment how to pay off your mortgage faster for a lack of better terms but this time utilizing a HELOC and if you don't know what a HELOC is it just basically stands for home equity line of credit and if you've never heard about it you are hearing it from the first time don't worry I've actually created a few episodes in the past so I'm going to leave the links down here below so you can check it out but do it later do not get out of this episode that's why I'm leaving you the links because I don't want you to lose that train of thought so stay with me for a sec so before we dive in into this whole strategy i want to do a breakdown as to what is your mortgage payment composed of right so you have your mortgage payment right and when you're looking at the mortgage statements you're going to see that part of it is made out of principal right plus interest and the other chunk is basically taxes right plus insurance right so this part is what makes up the escrow, right? This is where I said in the prior episode that you can actually ask the bank to remove your escrow and then use that money that you're quote unquote saving from the escrow and reinvesting it into your principal. So that way you are reducing your mortgage payments more and more because you will be charged less in interest. And now that you know that, let's just take a step back and analyze how a HELOC actually works, right? So let's say you have this house right here, this gorgeous house that you bought a couple of years ago and that you originally pay $100,000 for it, right? So $100,000 and because you wanted to get some amount of equity, you've actually invested $20,000, which is the equivalent of the 20%. And you've used $20,000 to put that as the down payment, which means you have an equity of $20,000 in the house. And you went ahead and you financed the remaining 80%, right? Which is the equivalent of 80,000. And you just simply started paying your mortgage payments and let a few years go by right so let's assume that in fact a few years did go by and you are here now and your property instead of being worth a hundred thousand dollars it is now worth right one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and the way the HELOC works is that it takes all of your equity into account, right? So if you subtract 150,000 minus 100,000, that means that you automatically got an equity of $50,000, right? So $50,000, now we're gonna add the $20,000 that you pay, right, as part of your down payment. And let's say that you have been very diligent with your mortgage payments and you managed to reduce that debt from 80,000 to 70,000, and that means that you have paid down $10,000 right so we're gonna take all of these numbers and we're gonna add it up and now we have five seven eighty thousand dollars so that means an equity today you have eighty thousand dollars now if you're shopping around for HELOCs you will notice that some banks say let's say for example 80 LTV 
some will say uh, 70 LTV. So LTV simply means loan to value, and it just means that this is the percentage that they're gonna be able to um, help you finance and give you that cash, right? So when you see an 80 LTV, that means that the bank is willing to give you 80% of your equity. If you see a 70 LTV, that means they're gonna give you 70% of this. So for simplicity purposes, let's say that you are working with a bank that is giving you an 80 LTV, and that means that your new HELOC is gonna be for $64,000. So the concept of velocity banking leveraging a HELOC is saying that now that you have a HELOC for $64,000, you're gonna take this much money and you're gonna use that to pay down the principal, right? You're gonna contribute all of that $64,000 towards the principal. So now, because you already paid down $10,000, that means that whatever amount is left in your mortgage is 70,000, right? Because you originally financed 80,000, you pay down 10,000, so you still owe 70,000. So you're gonna do 64, you're gonna take the 64,000 and you're gonna pay this down. And now, as opposed to you owing $70,000, you're gonna owe now $6,000 in that mortgage, right? So, now you're thinking, wow, that's pretty cool. I already reduced my mortgage by 6,000, which means now the interest and in that mortgage is gonna be towards the 6,000 and not towards the 70,000, right? But at the same time, I can see some people say, hey, wait a minute, that looks cool over here, but I still have another loan to pay over here. Who's gonna pay for it? Me, right? Well. Let me remind you something, right? For those who are asking those rhetorical questions, let me tell you that one, the banks are actually in the business of making money and they're not here to do charity. And then two, this isn't the lotto. Of course, you're gonna have to pay that money back, right? I think the key question here is how you actually pay that money back. So we're gonna hold that thought right here and I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's see if I can find some space in this board. So let's say for example, Right, I want you to look at what a mortgage is made out of or composed of, and at the same time, I want you to think about what a HELOC is about, right? So when you look at the mortgage breakdown, right, let's say for example, for $2,000 that you're paying, right, out of that $2,000 that you're making every month, only $100 is gonna go towards your principal, and $1,900, it's gonna go towards your interest. And if you don't believe me, you're more than welcome to check your mortgage statement so that way you can see the breakdown. But when a mortgage is amortized, that means the biggest chunk of that payment is gonna go towards the interest payments, right? And very little is gonna go towards your mortgage, which means that it will take you pretty much forever and you will be paying a lot of money in interest before you can say, hey, I own my house free and clear, right? Now, if you look at the HELOC, the HELOC works exactly like a credit card. That means they use simple interest, right? Which means that whenever you're making a payment towards your HELOC, the interests are divided equally throughout the life of that entire HELOC, right? So you can have it for 15 years, 20 years, it all depends on the bank, but you don't have to worry that if you're making a $2,000 payment, that $1,900 is gonna go all towards that HELOC. It works exactly like a credit card. Now that you know this, some of you might possibly say, well, if it works exactly like a credit card, can I just use the credit card? Yes, you can, but the goal of this approach is that you can get the most amount of money as possible. Here, with one HELOC, you can get access to $64,000, or depending on how much equity that you have acquired. But if you feel that you can actually get more money using the credit card route, then you're more than welcome to use that route and check out the video down here below so you can learn how to do it. The whole point for doing this episode is that you get options. Some people can choose to even do all three, right? All of the three strategies that I talked about, using credit cards, using your escrow, leveraging the HELOC at the same time. The goal is to pay as much money today towards the principal, because if you have the ability to pay down $64,000, then you can see here how much it has reduced that mortgage debt versus let's say, oh, I'm gonna give an extra $100 every month. Yes, it will help you in the long term, 
firm. But if what you're looking to do is to reduce that number of interest drastically, so that way you can pay off your home faster, then this is the way to go. Because if you do $100 every month, again, it's going to help you in the long term, but it's not going to have the same effect. Your goal is to want to reduce as much as you can today, right? So you're probably wondering, okay, that sounds great, but I'm still hung up on the whole idea of how to actually pay down two mortgages, two loans, right? Two debts that I will be owing the bank. And we're gonna cover that later. But in the meantime, I need to take care of this board. I need to make some space. And while I'm making that space, and if you're enjoying this episode, make sure you hit the like button here down below while I do the cleaning right now. Okay, I'm back now, so I got some more space. So before I dive in to the strategy on how to actually pay it off, I want to let you know that I've actually done a ton of research because I wanted to learn from the best of the best in the market. Some of you know I am a real estate investor, but I do not own my own place because I decided to make the most out of my money and invest out of state. I actually live in New York City and therefore life here and properties here are ridiculously expensive and I just didn't think that it was the right thing for me to do. But if you're curious to learn how I actually analyze my numbers, I'm gonna leave you a link down below to another video where I actually did the breakdown on how I ended up deciding to not invest in my own home, but instead invest in the real estate portfolio. Now, I did some research, right, in the market, and the best strategy that I found was one that was written by Clayton and Natalie Morris, and a copy of the book, it's right here, as you can see, and also I'm gonna leave you the link down below so you can actually check it out and purchase the book as well. I highly recommend it. It's actually very good. So first things first, let's just go down and break down how they actually took care of both mortgages or both loans at the same time, right? So rule number one, right? Be disciplined. If you think you're actually going to have a hard time managing your finances in here, I don't think this is the right strategy for you, but I highly doubt that you wouldn't be financially disciplined. Otherwise, you wouldn't be looking at content like this, right? So number one, be disciplined. And number two, make sure that the HELOC that you are about to purchase allows you to have direct deposit, right? And that also works like a checking account, right? So you want your HELOC to have that capability. So we already took care of the payment. We already said we're gonna take all of the $64,000 that you know you will be getting off of that HELOC, right? So here's how you're gonna tackle things, right? So you're gonna have all your direct deposit or all your paycheck go straight into your HELOC account, right? So you're gonna have all of your money, you're gonna take $64,000, you're gonna put it towards the mortgage and everything that you receive, all of that money from your paycheck, from your pay stuff, from your job, you're gonna have all of that go straight into the HELOC. Why? Because it serves two purposes, right? One, that means that after you use the HELOC to pay your mortgage, now you have a HELOC monthly payment, right? That you're gonna have to take care of, right? So for those who don't know, HELOCs are usually interest only for the first year or for the first period, whatever is negotiated. So that means that whatever payments that you're making are gonna be interest only. So let's say for example, for a $64,000 loan, let's say your HELOC is $400 just in interest. But let's say for example, that whatever money that you receive from your paycheck is the equivalent of, um, I don't know, $3,000. I'm just making a number up, right? So you're gonna have your employer deposit that money, your salary directly into the HELOC account, which is working like a checking account, right? So it will serve two purposes. That $3,000 is working or acting as a payment towards the 500 and the remaining 2,500 is gonna go towards the debt. So that means you're reducing this by $2,500, right? And if you don't have direct deposit, that's okay. All you gotta do is just to take a copy of your check and you're gonna deposit it into this checking account and it will work like magic and it'll work the same right now you're probably wondering okay so I am 
making a $3,000 payment, quote unquote, towards this 500, and then that means I have $2,500 that I've reduced from this mortgage. But what about my existing mortgage and what about all my utilities, right? So you're gonna take this same account, right? This same HELOC checking account, and you're gonna use the money from here and you're gonna pay your mortgage. But because you reduce your mortgage down to $7,000, right? Your mortgage, it's now, 7,000, right? And if you don't remember, feel free to rewind after you're done watching this episode, but it's $7,000. And that means your monthly payment and that mortgage is gonna be so small compared to the $2,000 that you were paying before. So let's say for example, now your new mortgage payment is, I don't know, $300, let's say. So that means that out of the 25 that is left, you pay $300 towards your mortgage. Now you're left with $2,200. That's still a good money that you have paid down towards the HELOC, right? But then you might be wondering, okay, so then what happens with my utilities? What happened to my groceries? What happened to my gas? And I think some of you might know where I'm gonna head out to, and that's credit cards, right? You're gonna rack up the points and a credit card that you have, whether it's a 0% credit card, whether it's one of those cards that give you more points in exchange of an annual fee, whatever credit card you choose to use, you're gonna use that to do your everyday expenses, right? Whether it's gas, whether it's groceries, and you have to be extremely disciplined. Don't just go rack up the debt for the sake of accumulating the points. Use your credit card responsibly to get your groceries, to get your utilities in check, to pay your cell phone, pay your electric bill. The whole goal is to do a short-term sacrifice with a lot of discipline, but at the same time, you will have the ability to actually kill that mortgage and be left with a HELOC that as you can see, you can easily pay down through the use of your own salary, your own paycheck. And after the end of the month, right, you're just simply gonna go ahead and pay that credit card directly from your HELOC checking account. And ideally, you shouldn't use up all of the 2200. You should use up less than that because the whole point is so that you can continue to pay down your HELOC, right? And at the same time, because you're utilizing credit cards that allow you to accumulate points, you can use those points as cash back and also help you reduce that debt that you have or have it as cash back and have have it sent to your checking account. So that way you can continue to bring the debt down or you just can simply save it and hoard those points and just use that for traveling, right? Use that to get your plane ticket to that vacation that you so very much deserve because you've been so good at your finances and you've been extremely disciplined managing your money. And this is in essence what I have to share with you guys regarding Velocity Banking using a HELOC as a strategy. Make sure you check out the book down below from Clayton and Natalie Morris is actually great if you're trying to pay off your mortgage fast and if you actually reside in your own resident. So feel free to use your home as a way to uh, pay off that mortgage fast. And while I still have you here, I've actually picked that episode where I talk about how to pay off your mortgage fast using credit cards. So make sure you check it here, right here. So that way you can learn about multiple strategies to tackle that mortgage. And that's it. That's all I have for you today. Hopefully you found the content valuable and do not forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.